everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a Bursa Thunder 380, which you probably can tell based on the name. It's chambered in 380 ACP, and these are made in Argentina. They look similar to a PPK, but there are quite a few differences between them. And this is a relatively inexpensive gun. They can be had in the $300-ish territory, depending on which color combination you get. This one is the Duotone but they're also available in a handful of different color combinations including just a blued version you know, with a black slide and a black frame. This particular one, and we'll start out with, is unloaded. This particular one, as I mentioned, is the Duotone version. So it's got an aluminum alloy frame that's in a stainless steel-ish look and then a blued slide. They're not a very big gun. 6.61 inches front to back they're 4.92 inches tall and they're 1.35 inches thick so it's it's a little bit bigger than many of the other small pocket pistols that you might look at but overall it's not a particularly large gun it is a little bit bigger than the PPK that it seems to be modeled after this particular magazine holds seven rounds there is an eight round version available and this was lent to us by a local viewer to do the video on and he's only got the one magazine for it so that's the one that we did the testing with. But there is a little bit higher capacity magazine available. From a safety perspective, this has quite a few different safeties. One of the safeties is this integral lock. And I'm not particularly a fan of these. It has a little bit of a key that you use to either go from fire to safe. The biggest thing I don't like about these is I don't like anything on the gun that could cause it to fail to fire when you need it to. You know, external locks that you loop through them, it's obvious whether the lock is on there or off. And this, if it didn't stay in the fire position and it turned itself to safe, it could shut the gun down, you know, in the middle of a situation where that's not cool. So I don't particularly like those, but the gun does have it. It also has a magazine disconnect. That's another contentious one. But from a safety perspective of safeties that are kind of mainstream, of course it has a thumb safety that is also a decocker. Now it's in the safe position and decocked, and thumb it back up. It is a little bit cumbersome to operate it with your thumb. It's easier to turn it off than it is to turn it on. To turn it off, you just kind of flick it and it goes off. Turning it on, you kind of got to wiggle around to get a hold of it. And it also has an internal firing pin block safety, as well as when the safety is in the, the on position, it actually has a hammer block as well. So there's a number of different safeties. The hammer block's a little bit difficult to see. I'm going to turn it off, turn it on. You can see it protrudes a little bit, and the hammer will hit that bottom part of the safety assembly before it can hit the firing pin. So from a carry perspective, it is quite a safe gun. And you know this thing here, you just leave it in the fire position all the time and you know use something like a safe or other method to secure it against unauthorized users. It has fairly nice grips. Now the grips are changeable. These are a rubberized grip with a nice texture on them and then finger grooves. Gives you a two finger grip. Now if you have the magazine in it, then you've got a full three finger grip. If you had a flush mag, then you get two and your pinky would kind of hang underneath. And it's got some serrations on the back strap. And these really felt nice. They didn't bite into the skin. It doesn't feel like a bunch of saw blades back there. But it does ensure that when you've got a hold of the gun, it kind of stays put. And you've got a decent beaver tail here to protect you from the hammer. Now one thing I did notice about this gun, it does kind of slap you in the hand a little bit. It's a little bit snappy, partially because it's a little bit light, you know, aluminum frame, and also just because of the way the curvature is, when it comes back, it kind of wants to give you a pop right here. Not bad, I mean, most of these little guns kind of jump around in your hand and let you know they're there, but it is just a little bit noticeable. There's also some serrations on the front of the trigger guard for somebody that wants to put their finger up front there. From a, and then even the trigger has got some serration, so when your fingers are on it, it's kind of easy to center and feel. That's actually a nice feeling trigger. All the controls are easy to operate. They're you know, serrated at the right places. And one thing that this has that some of the guns in this size territory don't is it does have a functional slide stop, slide release. So you can lock it back or you can release the slide when it's locked back, you know, after chambering it, after loading a loaded magazine with just a little flick. In fact, I noticed this one almost just breathe on it and it, go, it goes back into battery. The sights on this are actually one of the nicer features of the gun. The rear is dovetailed so that you could replace it if you chose to. And they're a three-dot arrangement. And the front one is integral. 
Actually, this one here is dovetailed. So you could even replace the front. Some of the variations of this have an integral sight. This particular one has a dovetail. But the three, the three dot sights that are on this, I wouldn't really have any inclination to change. They're really easy to see, and it was easy to you know, get on target with this and you know, pull nice groups with it. It's also kind of a nice looking gun. It's stylish. It's kind of got that swooping texture and a little bit of you know, style going on on the slide. So a lot of these little guns are just you know, basic function. This one's actually kind of nice looking. It is a blowback gun. We did not find it to be ammo sensitive. In fact, we had no trouble with this gun whatsoever. However, the owner at one point did have some trouble with it with a pin that holds the extractor in place moving around and coming out and he, the extractor flew off it a couple of times. He did get that resolved and he hasn't any trouble since, but during the tenure with it here, it's, it's worked perfectly for us. And it's actually, you know, it's kind of fun to shoot and it's overall just kind of a cool little thing. So we'll go ahead and take it apart and show you the internals. Disassembling this is mostly fairly easy, it, and like, unlike a lot of blowback ones, you don't need tools for it. You want to have the safety in the fire position. You don't want it to try to decock itself while you're taking it apart. And of course you want to make sure it's unloaded. Now on this one here, what you do is you'd lock it back, and of course you'd remove the magazine. You can lock it back either with the magazine or you can lock it back with uh, the slide stop slide release. Grab a hold of the slide, pull back, push down on this little lever, bring it all the way back and then up. Now when you get to the end of travel is, this is part where it gets a little bit tricky. You kind of pull it back a little bit and you have to lift it up. You almost feel like you're going to bend something or break something. You just pull it up just a little bit. You aren't wanting to torque on it. And then the slide pops off and you're left with the assembled frame. Now the frame has a fixed barrel and then the recoil spring sits on here. And one thing about this recoil spring is it is directional. If I put it the other way, notice there's no drag or anything. What will happen is this end is small and the barrel won't fit through it properly when you go to put it back together. So if you get it on backwards, you're not getting it back together. If you have it the right way, you'll find it's a little bit of a drag to put the spring on. It's not difficult. But that way you know you've got it the right way. Internally, there's not a whole lot going on. The feed ramp here is integral with the frame, the lower part of it, and then the barrel, similar to a 1911 barrel, has kind of got a little bit of a ramp to it all the way around. So it's got a two-part feed ramp. We did not find this to be ammo sensitive. The only concern I've got is this is an aluminum alloy frame instead of a stainless steel. So over time there's a possibility of that integral ramp wearing. You'll see there's a few scuff marks on it, and if that were to wear significantly you might start to have a little bit of trouble with it working properly. Let me go show you the internal of the barrel. I'm going to pull the spring off just to make this a little easier. Get this up where there's some light. You can see it's conventional rifling. It is well machined. It's a three and a half inch barrel. And we didn't have any problem with bullet stabilization or any of the other issues that you might with a shorter barrel. It did work well. Go ahead and slide this back on there and put it on the correct way. You know instantly if you're going to put it on the wrong way. Now let's talk about the slide. Now there's not a whole lot going on in the slide, which is not uncommon with hammer-fired guns. You know, all the activities down there in the frame. There's the piston for the drop safety. And then, it might be easier to show you, see the safety, when I flick the safety, that ledge sticks out. In fact, I'll put it up this way and put some light on it. See that ledge that comes and goes? That's your hammer block. And then not only do you have that, but you have the drop safety piston. So with the combination of different safety features, you should not have to worry about dropping this gun, even though, of course, it's not a good idea to drop your gun. It's not really particularly good for them. But beyond that, it's relatively simple. All the, guide ri all the, the guides are back here. And then, of course, it rides on the barrel. And this is a little bit tighter than many of the normal, you know, like a Glock or any of the others, because it is part of the guide mechanism riding on the barrel itself. Reassembling it is just as easy as disassembling it. It has the same quirk though. You, light, you slide it in there, bring it on the barrel, and you kind of have to play with it to get it to go up and over. Get it all the way back, push this arm down, drop it into place, get it to line up, and then sometimes you have to play with it a little bit to get it to release. And at that point it's back in operation. So other than learning the tricks, it's not particularly difficult to disassemble and reassemble. 
and happily there's no tools. This is actually really easy to operate. You've got it in your hand, your finger's there, and you just push it down. So you aren't having to mess around with the trigger like you would on, on a PPK or near the trigger. So there's very little chance of accidentally dropping the hammer on an empty frame. I'm going to go ahead and load this up with snap caps. These are inert dummy rounds. And as you know, we don't dry fire guns we don't own. And this one, of course, is one we don't own. So out of respect for the owners of the guns, we're going to use snap caps to protect the firing pin. I'm not aware of these being fragile or delicate and having problems with dry fire, but that's just our standard practice. So I've now chambered a dummy round so I can play with the trigger. The trigger on this actually comes in really nice. In the single action mode, it's relatively short. There's a little bit of take up. And then a really short break, a little bit crisp actually, and it ends up all the way back and it comes in around five pounds. So it, it actually feels lighter than that. You know, I measure five pounds, but when I pull it, it actually feels lighter than that. And I had a second snap cap in there so I can show you the reset. I bring it out. There's the reset. It kind of gave me a partial click and I had to go a little further to get that full click. So I was right on the wall and then the break again. Now double action mode is all the way out. And unlike a lot of double action guns that are very heavy, this one's actually really smooth. It's a smooth, continuous, there's no stacking or you know, hang ups throughout the cycle, and it comes in around seven pounds. So as double action triggers go, it's a very, very nice trigger. And then of course you can always cock it manually and break it as well. Overall, for in the $300 territory, you're getting a lot of gun for the money. And if you're looking for a smaller gun but not wanting the smallest little mouse gun that's out there, this is actually a pretty good choice. Comfortable to use, easy to use. So far this one has been reliable with the exception of that issue with the extractor. And that very well could have been a one-off with this particular gun. But beyond that, it hasn't really had any issues. And it's got a lot of details, you know, like the serration on the top to cut glare when you're looking over the sights. And, you know, the, the styling and everything else that goes with it. It's not a bargain basement design. It's not bargain basement ergonomics. So overall, it's actually a pretty cool little gun in that price territory. And it comes with a lifetime warranty, uh, but it is restricted to the original owner. So that you know, as long as you buy this new, as long as you own it, it's under warranty from the manufacturer. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and click that bell if you do. And thank you to our YouTube subscribers and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. Thank you.